This episode is sponsored by Honey Badger. In addition to Honey Badger's great error monitoring service, they also have an uptime monitoring for web developers. And Honey Badger has recently shipped an update that allows for public status pages that can help communicate outages to your customers. In addition to your uptime monitoring, Honey Badger now monitors your SSL certificates. And Honey Badger now has actions which will allow you to do bulk updates to all your errors, or you can set defaults for incoming errors. About a month ago, a popular YouTube channel had their account hacked. And essentially, the live stream was Elon Musk talking about donating bitcoins to this certain address, and then you would receive double the amount back. And it's a known scam that has taken a lot of money from a lot of people. And the nature of this particular breach, if I understand it correctly, was someone at their company opened up an attachment, and that attachment then looked at all of these sessions on their browser, and then sent those sessions off, and it was essentially a session hijack. And so to demonstrate the session hijacking, I have two different browsers open. I'll refresh the page on each of them. And on the one, you can see that this user is authenticated. This user is John Smith at example.com. And on this other one, we don't have any user authenticated. However, if we pull up our dev tools, and if we go under the application, cookies, and then if we look at the cookies, there is a template session for this particular user. And I'm just going to copy that session. And then on the other browser, I'm going to delete the existing session that's in there. And I'm going to paste in the session that I had copied. So now if I were to refresh the page, I'm authenticated. So even if this user signs out, over here on the malicious browser, they're still signed in. And this kind of attack can be very damaging depending on which website it was that the account was compromised on. On this example app, there's really nothing much that could happen, especially because this is using device. So if they wanted to change a the password, they did have to enter in the existing password, which the attacker would not know. But while they were authenticated on the site, they could do a lot of damage. In the case of the YouTube channel, a live stream was created that could potentially have taken a lot of money from various people. And so in this episode, we're going to look at how we could prevent this kind of session hijacking and some of the drawbacks with this approach. And on a side note, it's always good to have additional security measures within your application. Maybe if you have a destructive or some kind of costly action that a user is about to perform, you could request their current password in order to authenticate to proceed with that request. And so let's go ahead and have a look at the implementation on a basic Rails 7 application using device, but this approach is not specific to device and you would be able to use it with really any other kind of authentication solution that you are using within your application. And so in the application controller, I want to add a before action. And this before action is just going to verify the session. It'll be a private method. And within here, we just want to return if the session, and then we can check the remote underscore IP is equal to the request.remote underscore IP. And so this is our guard clause where if the user's session has that remote IP stored and it is the same for the request coming in, then nothing's going to happen and they're going to be able to complete their request as they normally would. Otherwise, we can call the reset underscore session, which will essentially log out the user of their current session that they're in. We can set the session remote IP, and we can set this equal to our request.remote IP. And essentially, that's all we have to do. And just so we can see what this information is containing, let's go ahead and just make a copy of it. And in our welcome index, we'll just paste these in. And so that way, we're just able to see what's going on. And in the config application.rb, I'm going to set the config.host is equal to nil, just so I'm able to use ingrock to test this out. And so we're going to be able to test with this, where if I take this local session, and if a bad actor were able to get a hold of that, and if they try to set their session cookie to that value, and if they were to refresh the page, then they're still not signed in. And so the main vector that this is trying to protect 
is the situation where there are overseas hackers or malicious actors and they're gaining access to your account. But with this particular approach, it wouldn't do anything for them. However, as you may have guessed, if we were to change our URL and if we were to sign in, we're able to authenticate successfully, but now our IP address is the same IP address as the bad actor. And if we were to paste in this session and update it on the bad actor side and refresh the page, then they're still able to gain access. So this is not going to work in situations where maybe you have a corporate network that's all sharing one IP address, or if you're at a university or a coffee shop or something similar. Because if the malicious actor is local on that network, then they're going to share that same public IP address, and then it's not going to do anything to protect your account. But more often, a lot of these attacks are happening remotely. And that's one consideration that you need to make with this approach. Is it actually going to solve the particular attack vector that your application is currently exposed to? And the second consideration is for the folks who are on a mobile device where their IP address may change periodically. So here, I just connected to a different VPN network. And once connected, my public IP address is going to change. So for a good actor, as they are performing actions on the website, they're going to notice that their account is then just signed out for some reason. And they can authenticate again, and then everything will be fine until they disconnect from the VPN or if they connect to a different IP address. And so that would be an inconvenience to a user. And you really have to gauge for your application is where is it going to be used most often? Is it going to be used on mobile devices or are they going to be on a desktop? And just remember, if something is convenient, then you're usually giving up something else and most often that is security. So I've recorded other episodes on hardware tokens for authentication and that kind of protection is good because it will prevent bad actors from logging into your account, but it won't do anything for the session hijacking. And one important thing that you should always do with your applications is serve them over SSL. You want to make sure that if you're doing anything that's going across the network, whether it's your local network, which could be a coffee shop or some other public access point, then you are serving all that traffic over SSL because that will inherently encrypt all of its data, making it unreadable to anyone who is sniffing packets on the network. And on the Ruby on Rails guides, there's even a topic on the session hijacking, but unfortunately, it doesn't really provide too much information about it other than setting the config force SSL is equal to true, making sure that your application is served over SSL. And remember, if you are using something like Cloudflare Proxy, that you do have your web services set up properly so that you're able to gain the public IP address of the user who is accessing the account. Because if the request remote IP does not return the user's actual IP address, then it's not going to do anything to protect against that. And so in most applications where security is a very high concern, either because the personal identifiable information on that site or the value that someone could take or the destruction that they could do, then going with this kind of inconvenience would be worth it. Because in reality, it's not a matter of if you ever get hacked, it's just a matter of when especially on a local network where maybe there are other individuals who are not well-versed on cybersecurity, they may open up an email attachment and that could release a worm on the network. That worm could then just go through all the different browsers installed on that local machine and send off any sessions to a third-party site and then jump from one computer to another. So even if you have good security practices on your computer, you could still be victim to these kind of attacks from someone else on your network. And I think as we're developing, security has to come first, not only on our local machine that we're developing on, but then also the websites that we are developing. Because we can get into a lot of situations where you visit a malicious website or you open up a malicious email, you've installed a third-party application from an untrusted source, or many of the other different attack vectors. So just be cautious out there as you're developing your application and on your development machines or really any machine that you're performing any kind of sensitive transactions on, whether it's banking, online shopping, or your development, that you're not putting yourself or others at risk. Well, that's all for this episode. 
Thanks for watching.